Sounds like Kay's in trouble. At that apparition we saw had something to do with it. Come on. Is he dead? Yeah. He's messed up as bad as those two back there. Suppose that saucer or whatever it was had something to do with this? Your guess is good as mine, Larry. But one thing's sure, Inspector Clay's dead, <sighs> murdered, and somebody's responsible. You're in charge now, Lieutenant. Yeah, guess I am. Calvin, you guess him? You back up the car and get on the radio. Tell the coroner he's got to make another trip out here. Well, how about the lab boys? Well, who do you think we left back up the car, Boy Scout? Well, come on, Larry. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for another. It is always difficult to have last words over the grave of a friend. And Inspector Daniel Clay was a friend, a dear friend to me and to all of us. The bell has rung upon his great career. Now we lay him to rest, a rest well deserved, but so premature. <laughs> People turning south from the freeway were startled when they saw a flying saucer. There comes a time in each man's life when he can't even believe his own eyes. Saucers seen over Hollywood. Saucers seen over Washington, D.C. The army convoy moved into the field. Rockets were quickly set up. Colonel Tom Edwards, in charge of saucer field activities, was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. as they had come, they were gone, even to the piercing eye of radar and the speeding jet fighters. Quite a sight, wasn't it, sir? A sight I'd rather not be seeing. Are you worried about them, sir? Well, they must have a reason for their visits. Visits? The big guns, the usual way of welcoming visitors? We haven't always fired at them. Oh? For a time, we tried to contact him by radio, but no response. 
Then they attacked a town, a small town, I'll admit, but nevertheless a town of people, people who died. I never heard about that, sir. Well, it was covered up by the higher echelon. Take any fire, any earthquake, any major disaster, then wonder. Flying saucers, Captain, are still a rumor. Officially. Looks like we beat them off again, sir. What do they want? Where are they from? Where are they going? They, sir? Who? Well, this is a training maneuver, sir. We only did a little practice firing at the clouds. Yeah. I wonder what their next move will be. What will their next move be? Your space commander has returned from Earth. Send him in. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. Plan 9? Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrodes shot into the pineal pituitary glands of recent dead. Have you attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen too so far. We shall be just as successful on Mars. The living, they have no suspicion of your movements? We had to dispose of one policeman. However, none of those risen have been seen, at least not by anyone who still remains alive. It's too bad it must be handled this way. But it must. Yes, Excellency. Continue on. Report to me in two Earth days. I feared His Excellency wouldn't take our report this well. Well, had he been dealing with our own people, his reaction would have been completely different. He understands the difficulties of the Earth race. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our problems. But those whom we're using cannot think. They are the dead, brought to a simulated life by our electrode guns. You know, it's an interesting thing when you consider the Earth people who can think are so frightened by those who cannot, the dead. Well, our ship should be regenerated. We better get started. I still think you ought to go in town and stay with your mother until I get back. This is our home, and nothing's going to take me from it. Besides, most men try and keep their wives from going home to Mama. That's not the point. That's all the point there's going to be. Now toddle off and fly your flying machine, darling. But if you see any more flying saucers, will you tell them to pick another house to buzz? Be careful. Don't worry about me. Oh, you're the only thing I do worry about. Oh, forget about the flying saucers. They're up there. But there's something in that cemetery. And that's too close for comfort. The saucers are up there. And the cemetery's out there. But I'll be locked up in there. Now, off to your wild blue yonders. You promise you'll lock your doors immediately? I promise. Besides, I'll be in bed before half an hour is gone, with your pillow beside me. My pillow? Well, I have to have something to keep me company while you're away. Sometimes in the night when it does get a little lonely, I reach over and touch it. Then it doesn't seem so lonely anymore. <laughs> a crazy kid. See you Thursday. Goodbye, honey. You know I'm not leaving here until you lock safely inside. All right, darling.
If you're especially nice, I may even lock the side door. And be sure you keep the yard lights on. Mighty silent this trip, Jeff. Hmm? You haven't spoken ten words since takeoff. I guess I'm preoccupied, Danny. We've got 33 passengers back there that have time to be preoccupied. Flying this flybird doesn't give you that opportunity. I guess you're right, Danny. Follow up? Yeah. There's nothing wrong between you two. Oh, no, nothing like that. Just that I'm worried she being there alone and those strange things flying over the house and those incidents in the graveyard these past few days it's just got me wary. Well, maybe they haven't figured out those crazy skybirds yet, but I give you 50 to 1 odds the police have cleared up that cemetery thing by now. I hope so. If you're really that worried, Jeff, why don't you radio in and find out? Max should be on duty at the field by now. He could call Paul and relay the message to you. Hi, Edie. Hi, Silent. I haven't heard a word from this end of the plane since we left the field. I've just been giving himself and me a study in silence. The boys aren't feuding. No, no, Edie, nothing like that. I read about that cemetery business. I tried to get two kids not to buy too near one of those things. We'll get there soon enough as it is. He thought it'd be quiet and peaceful there. No doubt about that. It's quite all right, like a tomb. Say, I almost forgot what I came in here for. How's the coffee situation? Mm, that's for me. It sure wouldn't hurt a thing, Edie. Okay, be right back. And say, Jeff, make that call to Max. From the cemetery arose the moving figure of the dead old man. Hello? Who? Mac? Well, hi, Mac. Sure, I'm all right. I just fell asleep. Tell Jeff I'm all right. Okay, Mac. Thanks for calling. Good night.